Hello wonderful people, it's Medicosis Perfectionalis. Welcome back to my physics playlist. In previous videos, we talked about how to read physics graphs, the meaning of the slope and how to calculate the slope. We talked about scalars versus vectors, distance versus displacement, speed versus velocity. We talked about acceleration and many equations of kinematics. Today, you will learn how to read those velocity time graphs and how to use them to find out the total distance as well as the net displacement. Remember that distance is a scalar. It has a magnitude only, but no direction. So there is no such thing as a negative distance. Conversely, displacement is a vector. It has a magnitude and a direction. Therefore, displacement could be positive or could be negative. Click the like button, click the subscribe button, and let's get started. This video is part of my physics playlist. Try to watch these videos in order for maximum understanding and retention. Check out my other playlists as well. Physical quantities are divided into fundamental quantities and derived quantities. Fundamentals are the most basic. They are essential. You cannot define them in terms of anything else. For example, time. However, derived physical quantities are derived from something else. For example, surface area is derived from length and width. Volume is derived from length, width, and height. Speed is derived from distance and time because speed equals distance over time. Velocity is derived from displacement and time because velocity equals displacement over time. Acceleration equals velocity over time so it is also derived from something else. Next, scalars versus vectors. A scalar is a physical quantity that has a magnitude only, but no direction. A vector, on the other hand, has both a magnitude and a direction. Distance is a scalar, but displacement is a vector. Speed is a scalar, but velocity is a vector. So again, distance has a magnitude only, but no direction. So there is no such thing as a negative distance. But displacement has a magnitude and a direction. It could be a positive direction, positive sign, or a negative direction, negative sign. First, you look at the graph. First order of business is to look at the axes. On the y-axis, you'll have velocity, and on the x-axis, you'll have time. Hence, velocity, time, graph. When you see an area that's above this horizontal line, this is positive. But when you see an area that is below this horizontal line, this is negative. Remember, the displacement could be positive or could be negative. However, distance doesn't care. So if I want the total distance, I will add this area to that area in positive numbers. But if I want the displacement, well, this area has to be positive and this one has to be negative and then you add them together. Here is velocity and here is time. If you see velocity going up, 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 up like this, it means that velocity is increasing, i.e. I am speeding up, I am accelerating. So I started from rest and then I'm increasing my velocity, which means I'm accelerating. Remember that acceleration is what? It is delta V over delta T, the change in velocity over change in time. So this slope equals acceleration, okay? Which one is steeper, this one or this one? Well, this one is definitely steeper, i.e. it has a bigger slope, meaning it's a more rapid acceleration compared to this. Make no mistake about it, my velocity was going up here and here. However, in this part, my velocity was increasing at a higher rate than during this part. And then I decided to keep a constant speed or constant velocity. You can call it constant velocity, you can call it uniform velocity, or you can call it steady velocity. And then look at this, my velocity is decreasing, let's say from 20 meters per second to 10 meters per second, and then 5 meters per second. What's happening? I am decelerating. And because this line is very steep, like this, not like that, it is a rapid deceleration. Then look, my velocity reached zero. What does that mean? It means that I stopped moving, okay? And then time passes and passes and passes and I'm still stopped. 
then how is that possible? How is it possible for velocity to be negative? Well, it is only possible because you're moving in the opposite direction. For example, I was driving my car forwards, all of this area, and then I decided to drive in the opposite direction. Please remember that velocity equals the change in displacement over the change in time, and displacement could be positive or negative, hence what you see right here. If I start at 0 and then my velocity becomes negative 10, then the delta v equals negative 10. If the numerator is negative, the denominator is positive, then the acceleration will be negative, as you see here. And then what? Well, I have a uniform speed or uniform velocity or constant velocity in the opposite direction compared to that. And this is how you read a velocity time graph. Please remember that velocity equals displacement over time, which means what? You can do cross multiplication. Displacement equals velocity multiplied by time. How about distance? Distance equals speed multiplied by time. If you need help in physics, chemistry, biology, or medicine, I can personally tutor you. Go to medicosisperfectionalis.com and schedule a session. So let's practice from this graph right here. Please find out the total distance traveled and the net displacement. Please pause and try to solve this yourself. Remember what we've just said. Displacement equals velocity multiplied by time. Keep that in mind. Now let's divide this shape into triangles and rectangles to make the calculations easy. Okay, now let's look at this rectangle right here. Amazing. How do you calculate the surface area of a rectangle? If you say length times width, you are absolutely correct, which means this side multiplied by that side. Notice that this side right here is velocity. Okay, so here is my V. All right, how about this side right here? It represents time. Okay, so it's velocity multiplied by time. V times T is what? Oh, displacement, precisely. So if you multiply this by this, you're multiplying velocity by time, which is multiplying length by width. And when you multiply them together, you get the distance or displacement. So let's do it. From 20 to 40, there is a difference of 20. And here from 0 to 10, I have 10. So it is 10 multiplied by 20. 10 watt meters per second, because this is velocity. And 20 watt seconds. When you multiply meters per second by second, you get the answer in meters, because you will cancel second with second. Okay? How many meters? 10 times 20 is 200 meters. The surface area of this rectangle is 200 meters meaning that the displacement that took place here is 200 meters. Okay, now let's calculate the surface area, meaning the displacement, of this triangle. How do you calculate the surface area of a triangle? It is half the base times height. Here is the base, here is the height. How much is the base? Well, it's 20. Half of that is 10. So half times 20, and then the height is 10. So half times 20 times 10, Half of 20 is 10 times 10 is 100 meters like this. How about the surface area of this triangle right here? Half the base times height, okay? How much is the base here? It is from 40 to 50, so 10. You multiply that by height. The height is from here to here, which is also 10. So half times 10 times 10. 10 times 10 is 100. Half of that is 50 meters, okay? So here we have 100 meters. 200 meters and 50 meters. So the total distance equals 100 meters plus 200 meters plus 50 meters, or simply 350 meters. This is the total distance. How about the net displacement? Well, since all of these are positive numbers, it really doesn't matter. You add them again. 100 plus 200 plus 50 equals 350 meters. All of them are in the positive direction. If you're sophisticated, you can simply add positive 350 to tell your teacher or your professor that you understood that displacement is a vector, meaning it has a magnitude and a direction. And here are the same answers in color. Remember that the area of the triangle is half times the base times the height. As for the area of the rectangle, it's the length times the width. 
Let's try this one. From this graph, what is the total distance that we traveled in 80 seconds? And how about the net displacement in the same amount of time? Please pause. So how can we answer this? Again, you divide into triangles and rectangles like this to keep it easy. Okay, beautiful. Now, remember that these will have positive signs, but these will have negative signs because these are above the line, but these are below the line. When it comes to the total distance, it doesn't matter because you will add all of them together with positive signs. But when it comes to net displacement, you gotta be careful to make those positive, but those negative. So let's find out the area of each piece. We have one, two, three, four, five pieces to deal with. Okay, how about the area here? Half the base times height, okay? Where's the base? 20. And where's the height? 10. So it is half times 20 times 10, which is 100 meters. Amazing. How about the surface area here? This is length times width. 10 times 20. 10 times 20 is 200 meters. Amazing. And how about this triangle? Half the base, half of 10 is 5. Multiply that by the height. 5 times 10 is 50 meters. Okay. How about the surface area of this rectangle right here? Length times width. Here is 20. Here is negative 5. 20 times negative 5 is negative 100 meters. Then the area of this triangle, half the base or half of 10 is 5. Multiply this by negative 5 is negative 25 meters. Okay, when it comes to total distance, forget the negatives. Make everything positive. 100 plus 200 is 300. Plus 50, 350. Plus 100, 450. Plus 25, 475 meters. This is the total distance traveled in 80 seconds. How about the net displacement? We gotta be careful. Here is positive 100 meters plus 200 meters with positive plus 50 meters also positive minus 100 or you can say plus minus 100 same thing as saying minus 100 plus minus 25 meters 100 plus 200 is 300 plus 50 is 350 minus 100 250 minus 25 is 225 meters notice that the distance and the displacement are not the same and here are the same answers in color pause and review now let's solve the problem of the previous video please pause and take a moment to try to solve this yourself let's go a satellite revolves around the earth in a circular orbit at a height of 500 kilometers above the surface of the earth so let's draw this here is the earth amazing that's a sphere right here and then the satellite is 500 kilometers above the earth's surface here's the earth's surface and then 500 kilometers is here and here is my satellite remember that we need everything to be in meters so you multiply this times 10 power 3 meters the mass of the earth here is m which equals 5 times 10 power 24 kilograms there you go and the radius of the earth is this number in kilometers remember that we need to multiply this by 10 power 3 here is the radius of the earth so it is 6360 times 10 power 3 meters now which equation should we use to find out the orbital velocity of the satellite if you have watched my previous video, you will recall that we need this equation. The orbital velocity of the satellite equals the square root of g, which is the universal gravitational constant, times m, which is the mass of the Earth, divided by r. If you wish to see more physics videos in the future, drop down a telescope emoji in the comments. But what is r in this scenario? Is it the radius of the Earth? No, oh, not alone. Is it how high the satellite is from the surface of the Earth? No, uh, not alone. You need to add both of them together in meters. And when you add this number in meters to that number in meters, you get this number in meters. This will be the denominator here. And the gravitational constant does not change. It is 6.67 times 10 raised to the negative 11th power. Multiply this by the mass of the Earth, which is 5 times 10 power 24. Do the math, you find this. This is your orbital velocity of the satellite in meters per second. That's why you gotta make sure that everything has to be in meters. Next, how about the time required to make a complete revolution around Earth? This is the periodic time, the time of one period. 
the time of one complete orbit. Remember that velocity equals displacement over time. You just the rearrange the equation. So time equals distance over velocity. What's the distance in complete revolution? It is the complete circumference of Earth. So it is 2 pi r. Here is 2, here is pi, and here is r. Which r should I use now? Some students will say the circumference of the Earth. So this r should be just the radius of the Earth. No! Because remember that the satellite is up here. The satellite will make a complete revolution around the Earth, so I want the circumference of the path that the satellite takes around the Earth, not the circumference of Earth. So this circumference is 2 pi. What r are we talking about? This one, which is the radius of the Earth plus the height of the satellite from the surface of Earth which is the same r that we used up here in meters and what's the velocity we just calculated the velocity now you have all the numbers that you need this is your periodic time in seconds you can download these physics notes in pdf forms at metacosisperfectionetics.com i also have general chemistry notes organic chemistry notes biochemistry notes anatomy and physiology notes pharmacology notes all kinds of notes i help you learn understand and pass exams I hope you like the entire playlist and all the playlists as well. There are more than 35 playlists on this channel. If you found this video to be helpful, please support this channel by buying me a coffee. Go to buymeacoffee.com slash medicosis. To learn about how your kidney works, the glomerular filtration rate, what happens in the proximal tubule, loop of Henle, distal tubule, collecting ducts, etc., download my kidney physiology course at medicosisperfectsnetis.com. There are more than 600 premium videos available on this channel when you click the join button and choose the highest tier. Please subscribe, hit the bell, smash like, support my channel on Patreon, PayPal or Venmo, go to my website to download my courses, notes and cases, or if you would like me to personally tutor you. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfect Schneiders, where medicine makes perfect sense.